He has proven himself in our life. And we have come to realize, oh Lord, you are too faithful, oh Lord, to fail us, oh Lord. Thank you, King of Glory, for being there for us, oh Lord. Individually, Father, we thank you for being there for us. As a church, oh Lord, thank you for being there for us, oh Lord. We appreciate you, King of Glory, for all the things that you have done, for all the things you are yet to do, for all the things that you will yet do, oh Lord. We say thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your favor and your thank you for your favor and your protection, oh Lord. Accept our thanks with a heart of gratitude. We come before your presence this morning, Father. We ask that you fill us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Encourage us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit divine, O oh Lord, I empty myself, O oh Lord. Fill me, O oh Lord. Let me be used of you this morning, all to the glory of your holy name. At the end of today, Father, let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. If God has been faithful to you, damn your hand for Jesus. If God has been faithful to you, damn your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Good morning, church. First of all, permit me to say happy Sisters Conference Day. Our sisters, our mothers, our wives, our grandmas, we say happy conference. The theme is an ever-increasing Christian woman. And my prayer for you is that in every area of life, in every facet of life that you desire, you shall see increase in Jesus' name. I thank God for the privilege to be standing before God's children this morning. Because I look around, all I see is God's children. And I believe this message is for God's children. The book of Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Is anybody there? If you are there, say, I am there. If you are not there, say, wait for me. Or oh, nobody's with their Bible here. Okay, so we are there. And it says, let's read it together, please. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Let's say it again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Multimedia, please permit me from KJV version. Please, can you help me with NLT version, please, subsequently? Now, I've titled my message, um, God will come true for you. Amen? Amen? Okay. God will come true for me. God will come true for you in any area that you desire. In any area that you are looking up to God for, God will come true for you. There are a couple of things we need to understand. I need to set my timer. God, in every situation, God works. The Bible says that, you know, we know all things work together for good, right? All things, all things. Not some things, all things. So we know that God works in everything, not just isolated events. It's not when things are okay, you say, oh, God is working. When things in your view are not okay, God is still working. Amen? When things are not okay, God is still wor um, working. This means that, you know, when we say all things work together, and, and as Christians, this does not mean that all things that happen to us will be pleasant in our own view. Some things to us might be pleasant. Some things to us might be unpleasant. But I'm here to remind you that as a child of God, all things work together for good. Are we together? Now, note that God does not only work to make us happy. Yes, he does that. But that's not only what he does. He also works to fulfill his purpose for our lives. Are we together? God does not only work to make us happy, but to fulfill his, his purposes for our lives. So maybe you are here and you are saying, um, things is going in X way or Y way, right? And it's not pleasant to you. The question you need to ask yourself is, is it according to God's purpose for me? 
all things work together for good. For those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So in every situation, we ought to see God's purpose there. So I'll break it down into three categories. Right? The first category is a category that will say God when. Are we together? So I call them the God when gang. Oh, God when. When will my time come? You understand? The second category, the second category, we, we will go into them in detail. The second category is God how. So I call them the God how gang. Okay. I, I believe I'm talking to the dodo that are young at heart. So we can relate, right? Uh -huh. If not, I'll have said, I'll have put it in a different way. But if I say, the God when gang, and the God how gang, the last, the last you know, category is the God why gang. And in our lives, we've asked these three questions before. Either God when, God how, or God why. So, um, I didn't tell her before doing this, so I seek the indulgence of my wife to say some stories. Um, please permit me. I know you won't say no. Just to buttress those points of God when, God how, and God why. So let's take them one by one. The God when gang. So that is when you don't have anything yet. Or, or when you are looking up to something and you are saying, when will it be my turn? It may be a promotion, it may be an exam, it may be you want to strike a new business, it might be, you know, youth now, they like saying, it might be when you will get married. You understand? You are asking the question, God, when? Now, I'll take my case study from the story of, a story we all know, which is Hannah, right? We will start, the story of Hannah and Penina. Um, we know that Penina was multiplying. Hannah wasn't. Then Hannah went to ask, you know, she prayed with holy anger. And, and, and you can find this in the book of 1 Samuel. If you read 1 Samuel 1 and 1 Samuel 2, that's where you find this story. Um, when, she, she went to be good and said, God, when will my turn come? So she, she fit into the God when gang. Now there are times that we face barrenness. There are times that we, fa we may face barrenness when nothing comes to birth in our work. Maybe you are trying and it's not, you know, you're not seeing anything yet. You are saying, God, when? You know, and there comes a point whereby you say, God, what, to the point that your faith is sometimes wind because you've asked and asked and asked and God does not, no, no, let me put it this way. You've prayed in faith, but it's difficult for it to be effective because why? You are still asking that question, God, when? I'm here to remind you this morning, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it says, He has made all things appropriate in his time. Not your time, but his time. Are we together? So when you are asking the question, God, when? Try and understand that it may not be time yet, according to God's calendar. Now we see, in, 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 like I said, in, in, in the book of um, 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah prayed, you know, to the point where Eli was saying, Ma, um, early morning, you're already high. You understand? And he said, no, I'm not high. I'm just pained. Right? I'm just pained. There's something I'm looking up to God for. I've been praying and I'm asking God when. But as God will have it, by the time we get to 1 Samuel chapter 2, the first part of it speaks about the, uh, what do you call it? The praise Hannah gave. She says, now I have an answer for my enemies. Amen? And my prayer is that as you're asking God when, you also sing this song of praise. Now I have an answer for anyone asking me questions. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I have an answer for my questions. May this be your prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. We can see that God came true for Hannah. Am I right? In God's time, God came true for Hannah. A couple of years ago, before our first child was born, okay, so put it this way. There were two young people out of school, you know, 
um, and as the case um, will be, one proposed to the other, the guy proposed to the lady. I said, okay, why not chill? In our first year, let us enjoy ourselves. Let us just relax. Let us not ask for any, any baby. Let us just enjoy ourselves, the things that we have set serve ourselves off. Let us enjoy it. You understand? So from the second year, we can start attempting to multiply. But yes, the first year came and gone, all well and good. But by the time it was the second year, when it was time, okay, month one went, month two went, month three went, month four went, and the parents started calling, call like Kilun Shele. You know, call like what's, hap what's happening. So, you know, for them, they'll be counting the calendar for, from the day you, you know, call like what's going on, ah, month two, month three, month four, month five, are you okay? Um, you know, so the questions started coming from, from both sides. The second year went, nothing. Ah. Then, then we entered our God when season. The third year came, month one. It got to a point that we devised a very interesting means to avoid pressure. When our parents ask her what's going on, she will say, oh, it is me. That is her. When my parents ask me, I'll say, oh, it is me. So that way, each parent cannot go and be harassing the other person. Understand? So, but to the glory of God, I think uh, it was the December Holy Ghost Congress of 2017, 2017, that, you know, I got my point of just like to Hannah, God, you just do something for me, please. I am tired of this question. Yeah, 2017. Um, and I think that was my first time of attending Holy Ghost service, if I'm right. It, 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 it's 2007, sorry. I mean, it's our friend, sorry, 2007. It's our friend that said we should go and just see, see, what, the, see what God would do. And as God will have it, and as God will have it, you know, I got there, put up my heart, you know, you know as Hannah did. And um, before we knew it, in August, that was, you know, only goes to December, in August, when you came forth. So our God when became our praise God. When you sorry, Oluwa. Amen? So that is the God when gang. So the next gang will now be the God how gang. Now, there are times that God gives you a promise. God gives you a vision that even yourself, you cannot comprehend. You are asking the question, how will this come forth? How will this materialize? This is just me. I can't, I can't see it yet. You understand? I can't see it. But yes, God has given you that vision, but you can't see it. You are looking at the now, not, you know, um, not the later. Um, now, I recall, I don't know how true a story it is, but I think it was one of the fathers of faith. He said when he was ministering in Kaduna then, when he was starting out, um, it was him and the empty hall. And they asked, no, we are just ministering to empty hall. He says, no, I see people. You understand? He was speaking in faith. Now, there are times that God gives, like God gives you a promise that it seems very huge, very humongous, that you cannot relate it to where you are right now. Now, it is similar to what happened if you look at Elijah's case in the, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. You know, um, Elijah, you know, God gave Elijah the promise that, okay, go and tell Ahab that there will be rain. No, it was God that sent him. God sent him gently. He got there. Ahab, there will be rain. However, oh yeah, let rain come. Rain has not come. You understand? So you're so asking God, how will it happen? The guy went the first time, the help went the first time, second time, third time, until the seventh time. You understand? So there are times when God says something to us, we're asking the question, how will it happen? It doesn't concern you. It concerns God. Leave that part to God. You just need to do your part. Now, so that's the, so that's the God, um, um, the God how, um, the God how gang. Now, another one we can liken to this also is our father Abraham in, in, in Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, we all know the story, so let me not say it again. When they said, oh, you, um, Sarah, you will have a child this time um, um, next year in, in our today's language. Now, even Sarah laughed because why? Nobody understood how. But God understood how. If you're in this position that you're asking the God, you've given me this vision. You've given me this, um, this thing you want me to do, this assignment, but how will it happen? I am still here, but it is there. I cannot see it. I want to encourage you. With Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. 
The Bible says that, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Let me rephrase. Is your situation too hard for the Lord? Is your circumstance too hard for the Lord? Is your vision too hard for the Lord? So if God has given you that vision, understand that nothing, nothing is too hard for him to do. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 21, we see that God had um, done unto, okay, God had kept his word with Sarah, and he did exactly as he planned. My prayer for someone here is that as God has given you a vision, he will do exactly as he planned in the mighty name of Jesus. We can see here that God also came true for Sarah. He came true for Hannah. He came true for Sarah. Okay. Because of time, let me leave that story. Now, let's move to the God why. The God why gang. This, are, this is you and I that had something before. We're enjoying something before. Then something happened that we lost it. Are we together? And you're asking God, why? Why did it happen to me? Why is it happening now? Why? So you're asking the question, why? So I call it the God Why Gang. If you look at the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1 to 11, that's the story of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. We all know the story. But most times we look at this story from the point of view of either Jesus Christ or from the point of view of Lazarus, right? However, have you ever wondered to look at the, view, the story from the point of view of Martha and Mary? And, if, and it might be interesting to know that Martha and Mary and Lazarus were close friends of Jesus. You understand? So Jesus had friends outside his, you know, his disciple um, 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 cycle. When Lazarus was sick, Martha and Mary went to tell him, uh, you know, sent for Jesus. I, 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 what did Jesus do? He waited two extra days. Two extra days. So look at things from the point of view of Martha and Mary, and all of a sudden, their brother died. So they had something, and they lost something. They were not asking God, why? If you were here, it wouldn't have happened. If you were here, this wouldn't have happened. Now, you might be here asking, maybe something has happened to you, and you're, and you're, and you're trying to understand, God, why did this happen to me? Why is it happening now? I'd like to remind us that because we are Christians, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't absorb us of pain. In the life of both, you know, of pain. Both believers and non-believers will experience pain. The diesel that we are buying at 700 is, is hitting everybody. It doesn't say believers buy at this filling station. Non-believers buy here. No. So because of believers, it doesn't absorb us of that, you know, and pain. So we need to understand that. However, we can see that Christians do not have different experiences in life. Rather, we experience life differently. Amen. We do not have different experiences in life. Rather, we experience life differently because of the hope, because of the bedrock that we have, because of the foundation that we are standing upon, which is Christ. So yes, it is possible that in your office they are downsizing, and you have prayed, Lord, let me not be downsized. And when the list comes out, your name is there. Just like an unbeliever, and you're asking God, why? The difference between both of you is the fact that why he will say, oh, my own is finished. You will say, God, my God is able. You, you will say, all things work together for, all things will work together for me. You, you will say, lines are falling in pleasant places for me. Our hope in Jesus Christ does not insulate us from life difficulties, but it provides us a way through and beyond them. Now, if you look at that, that, that book of Genesis, John chapter 10, verse 23, Jesus Christ told Martha that your brother will rise again. And I'm here praying that your career will rise again. Yes. Your business will rise again. Yes. The works of your hands will rise again yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Your academics will rise again yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And by the time we get to verse 44, Jesus came true for Martha and Mary. So, God came true for what? For Hannah? There are many people God came true for. But yes, I've given you, the, you know, three people that, that we can all relate with that God came through for them. Now, 
think that must have been 2018. 2018. 2018, January. That was when Daddy Gio came. And um, by the time we got to the I think it came around that third week. I think third week, second, third week in January. And by the time it got to the fourth week, pardon me, if, if, you're, a, if you're in a class in Believer's class, you probably have heard this story. Pardon me, I'll say it again. Um, and if I've said it here before, pardon me. Let me repeat again for emphasis. January 2018, God, um, I got to the office that early morning. And the next thing I heard on the Monday morning was the, the MD walked in and said, and said Kola, I need you to resign. Just like that. I need you to resign. Why? He didn't say. What have I done? He didn't say. What is the circumstance? He didn't say. I just need you to resign. After my early morning chit chat, our early morning coffee, eh, 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 Kola, I need something from you. I need you to resign. It was difficult. And we just, that teacher just came now. He just, you know, he just prayed for us, right? He called us there as ministers and we knelt down and he prayed for us. Now it's happening a week, you know, a week after. God, why? There are three people I told. I, you know, I, my dad, so my wife first, my dad, and pastor. People I told. But I was asking the question, God, why? I had some, everything was going okay. Then I lost it. I know you've planned your life, you know, based on, you know, you've already planned some things, and it happened. Okay, the new reality came. I started saying, okay, let me apply. I've never applied for work before. Work normally looks for me. I started sending out CVs. Okay, every day I send out one CV to one random place, one, you know, one, one job site, one this, one that. I got a few interviews here and there. February came, nothing. March came. But Pascal was preaching on, um, on pride, digging deep Tuesday. He came and he preached on pride. He spoke about it. I sat down and I said, okay, so does it mean that I'm still raising my shoulder? After the service, I, I think I called him and Pastor Jimoko and asked one or two questions. Okay, so then I, 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 was, I was saying I wouldn't resign from the board. Though I, was, I resigned from the office. But I didn't want to resign from the board. I said, okay, at the board meeting, we'll meet ourselves there. You know, you say, okay, okay, we'll meet ourselves at the board. Then, because I believe that I knew things more than the MD. Because, yes, I, I was I wanted to approve the MD's recruitment. Understand? I then asked both of them, and I said, Kola, you are still showing signs of pride. That night, it was heavy for me. The following morning, I just drove my car to the company secretary's office and I dropped my resignation letter off from this thing, from the board. So I hands off the place completely. As God will have it, like I said, I don't look for work. Work looks for me. One headhunter that has been my friend in the UK for close to 10, 12 years sent me a mail within a week saying, Kola, I know you're not yet ready. Because anytime she asks me, I say, I'm not ready. And I said, I know you, you're not yet ready for a move, but can you just look at this? job description and see if you will please take it. You understand? This was around that April. I looked at it, I took it, and as God will have it, by, by September 1, I resumed the new place. Now, interestingly, um, where I was living, my pay was almost double, almost 1.5, 1.6%, oh, oh, over and above. So yes, where I'm going to is that, in the beginning, you might be asking God, why? Why did it happen, uh, happen to me? Interestingly, in eight months' time, I understood why. I also got to find out that in, in less than three months, the, the company was taken over and everybody was flushed away. So God was protecting his own. Amen? So if you are here wondering, God, something has happened to me. Why? All things work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So I want to encourage us, just in case you are facing any difficulty, just in case you are facing any, any what you see as um, drawback, setback, stagnation, and you are trying to figure out why, Lord, why, as a child of God, understand that all things work together for good. So, in conclusion, what do we do when we are waiting? I won't go over, over it. I will refer you to last week's sermon. However, two things I know that you need to do. You must know him, and he knows you. You must know him, for he knows you. So, like, you must know him, 
for he knows you. Because God knows you, you yourself, you have to know him. Not only that, you must heed his call because he's going to call you to do something. He might be calling somebody here for something. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door. You know, he is knocking. If you want to answer, answer. Are we together? He knows you, but the question is, do you know him? So while you are waiting, make sure that you constantly keep in touch with him. You must remain in him and constantly behold his face. You must remain in him and constantly behold his face. Lastly, keep hope alive. Don't be, da don't be downcasted because life has happened. Whether you are the what gang, the how gang, or the why gang, keep your hope alive. We know that the expectation of the righteous shall not be caught short. Now, Romans 8, 28 to 30, also know that this promise is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It can only be claimed by those who love God. Not only that, and are called according to his purpose. And are called according to his purpose. So, I'm encouraging you here. Remain in him. Whichever gang you belong to, whether you are the, in the what gang, what, what gang, the when gang, or the why gang, you understand? We have an assurance of the efficacy of our God. We have an assurance of the effectual nature of our God. Our God is both efficient and effective. That's one assurance that we have. Remember the advice in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 is popular. We know it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will guide you. Amen? Also, Lamentation 3.25 says, The Lord is good. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. And my prayer is that may God be good to you. May God be good to you. So quickly, we'll take one or two prayers. You can pray it on your seat. You can pray it standing. You can pray it kneeling. Say, Father, whatever difficulty I am going through, whatever challenge I am going through, Father, come true for me, O Lord. Come true for me, Father. Whatever difficulty I might be going through at this point in time, Grant me the grace, grant me the strength to remain in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever difficulty I might be facing, O oh Lord, whether it is man-made or self-made, whether it is from outside or inside, O oh Lord, Father, grant me strength through them, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. You have come true for Hannah before. You have come true for Abraham, for Sarah before. You have come true for Martha, O oh Lord. You have come true for Kola. You, oh Father, come true for me, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. All things work out for good for those that are called according to his purpose. Father, reveal your purpose unto me, O Lord. Reveal your purpose unto me, King of glory. Lord, I am asking, Father, reveal your purpose unto me, Father. Let my will be aligned to yours, O Lord. Let my will be aligned to yours, O oh Lord, that you may be glorified in my life. The situation, the circumstance, I might be facing myself, O oh Lord. Father, I ask, O oh Lord, come through for me, O oh Lord. Come through for my children. Come through for my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are here and you don't know God, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those that know God. So if you want things to start moving for you, just signify by raising up your hand and, and, and let us pray from here. So that things will start progressing for you. So that things will start working for you. So that things will start increasing for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, King of God, for all your children, O oh Lord. Lord, we are asking more than I have spoken, O oh Lord. 
more than, you, more than you have spoken through me, O oh Lord. Father, increase this knowledge in the heart of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have, we have prayed. I want to say, I, want to say, I am assured that God will come true for me. I am assured that God will come true for me. You know why? Because we serve an amazing God. Praise the Lord.